Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming. My name is Hassan. I'm super excited to be here today uh, to talk to you about uh, how to use open source models to build AI apps with millions of users. Um, I've been building AI apps for, for several years now, and I just want to come tell you a little bit about my journey, show off some of the apps, and then tell you about uh, kind of my whole process uh, of, of building these apps from idea to having the finished app, and uh, how I uh, market them as well, and then some, some uh, advice overall. So I'll start off with some intros about who I am, Together AI, the company I work for, uh, why it's one of the best times to build right now, and then we'll get into demos. Uh, I'll talk about my tech stack and architecture, and then I'll end with uh, my process for building these apps and uh, advice I have for other people uh, building these apps. So. Um, I lead developer relations for an AI infra company called uh, Together AI, but probably the most relevant part uh, for this talk is the fact that I, I build a lot of these AI apps. And I've probably averaged one a month for the last four years, um, and I've been fortunate enough that some of them have done uh, pretty well and, and have gotten uh, a good amount of users and, and GitHub stars as well. Everything I do also is open source, so I'm going to show off some demos, uh, but also you can check those out in your own time, and you can uh, dig into the code uh, as well. Um, like I said, I, I lead developer relations for an AI cloud platform called Together AI. Um, we're a platform for open source models. We give you an inference API to be able to query uh, really any open source models probably that are out there that, that are good. Uh, so we have uh, chat models like Quen3. We have uh, reasoning models like DeepSeekR1. We have image models like the Flux Context model that came out recently. Uh, we have vision models, audio models, uh, you know, uh, almost all modalities. We also let you uh, run these models on dedicated instances uh, or fine tune them on your own data. And, and we have a GPU cluster product as well uh, if you want a uh, training cluster. Um, so before I get into the demos, I just want to talk about the fact that it's, it's really a historic time right now for building. And I think this is because of two things. Like one, I think the barrier for building has lowered dramatically with a lot of these AI tools, right? You can use Cursor and Windsurf with your IDE to autocomplete stuff. You could use uh, these AI builders like Bolt and V0 and, and Lovable to prototype apps really quickly. Uh, you can use chat apps to kind of brainstorm ideas or, or um, go through the process of building an app. You know, you can go to a chat app and say, uh, I'm building a Swift app for the first time. Can you guide me through how to do it? Right? So I think like the, the barrier has lowered on one side. And on the other side, we're having these like groundbreaking models come out every single week that are enabling um, completely en enabling builders to, to build completely new things. So it's like these incredible AI models are coming out that you can build with, and it's gotten a little bit easier. Um, so I, I, I just think it's, it's an incredible time to, to be building apps right now. Um, I'm going to dig into a couple of demos. These are some of the apps I, I've built that I'll, I'll spend like 30 seconds on each one demoing, demoing really quickly. Uh, but one thing to, to, to note really quick is the fact that some of these apps have a couple thousand uh, people that have used them, and then some of them have like a million plus. And I think like uh, at a certain point, it is a numbers game, and you kind of have to try out a lot of different stuff. And, and I'll talk about kind of how, how I approach that. Um, so we'll uh, switch into some demos. So in the beginning, when I was when I started building, kind of a few years ago, um, I wouldn't know what to build. So I'd go on Twitter and I'd look up, you know, people that tweeted like, "Oh, I need an app to do this." And so here's Samina said, uh, "Can someone build an app to help me pick some glasses?" And I was like, "Sure, I got you." Um, and uh, you know, built this little um, <coughs> tool that takes a bunch of different requirements, uh, turns them into a query, and then actually um, uses the Amazon API to find products that you can actually you know, click on and, and buy. Um, and another one of these was uh, one of my friends, Theo, tweeted out, like, uh, you know, I just want an AI app that writes my commit messages for me. And uh, my CTO at the time was like, I love that idea. And uh, so I just decided to build it. And um, all it does is when you do git add, it takes the git diff, it sends it to an AI, to an AI model, and uh, it writes a commit message for you, and it, and it kind of uh, shows it to you, and you can kind of accept it. So this is one of my first apps that I built that, that ended up doing really well, and uh, got uh, I, I think it got about 40,000 people that have installed it and, and downloaded it, and it's also open source, and, and I had uh, a bunch of people contribute, which, which has uh, been great. Um, another app I built was a, like, 
text to app builder. There's a bunch of these um, where you can type in an app that you want to build. Here I'm going to say like a quiz app about American history. And the way this works is it, it takes this prompt, it sends it to an AI model to come up with a project plan, and then it sends it to another model to actually uh, write React code that, that we can show. So um, in, in a second, this should populate, but uh, obviously also, also open source. Um, I've had about 5 million requests go through this app and about a million apps built um, just through this. Uh, and, and I have uh, a little over a million people that have ended up uh, using it. So this is an app, yeah, that, that kind of just generates images uh, as, as you go through it. And um, also has about uh, over a million people and, and has uh, about 48 million images that were actually generated uh, with this app. I have an app called Napkins where uh, it, it takes a, a screenshot of, a, uh, the idea is it takes a screenshot of a napkin. Like, the idea is like you draw a little web app on a napkin, it takes a screenshot of it, and it can actually uh, uh, build it for you. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's another one of my apps. That one has about 40,000 uh, uh, users. I have another one that lets people kind of upload a resume and then builds them like a personal site like this. Uh, for, for people to check out. Uh, and you know, there's, there's a bunch of others, ones that visualize menus. Um, I built like an, an AI uh, chat app, like a, a tutor app where you can um, you know, put in a topic that you're interested in, like personal finance, and it can explain it in the level of like an elementary school um, uh, uh, person, uh, and then some OCR stuff as well. So I'll get back to the slides. Um, a lot of these apps have uh, a very similar architecture that I end up using. And so this similar architecture starts with uh, a user coming in and typing something or uploading an image usually. So it's some sort of user input, right? And I take that and I generally will send it to an AI model on, on Together AI. So it could be like an image to image app where I, I take an image and I send it to an AI model to make another image and then show that to the user. Um, so step two is I send it to an AI model. Step three a lot of the time is I, I store that uh, image or uh, that text in the database to be able to show it to the user. And then step four is I just show it to the user. Um, so it's a, a very, very simple architecture. A lot of the time, there's one single API call happening. You know, the user does something. I send one API call to an AI model. I get the response back, and I show it to the user. Um, and I think it's this simplicity that uh, is, is really, really important, both for moving very quickly, um, but also for validating these ideas. You know, the more simple you can drill down an idea, the, the, the faster you can kind of build. And then this is my tech stack uh, that I usually use. I use Together AI for all of my AI models. I use Next.js and TypeScript as my like full stack framework uh, for building things. I use Neon as a uh, as my database. It's a, just like a really good serverless Postgres host. I use Clerk for authentication. Uh, I use Prisma as a way to talk to my database and TypeScript. Uh, I use Shatzian and Tailwind for for styling. S3 for uploading images. Plausible for uh, website analytics, and I kind of uh, showed you guys this uh, in, in a couple different places. Uh, so it's cool that I can see the number of unique visitors. I can also see where they're coming from and what countries and what device they're using it on. Uh, and one thing I always get very um, uh, surprised by is the fact that a lot of people use most of my apps on, on mobile. So like it just goes to show that the like mobile experience is really, really important. Um, so plausible for website analytics, Helicone for LLM analytics, so I can dig into my LLM requests and like troubleshoot things, and then Vercel for, uh, for hosting uh, these apps. Cool. So I'm going to talk about my process for building these apps. And, and a question I get a lot is like, how do you come up with these ideas? Uh, and, and I think like, the, the biggest thing I did for ideas that, that helped me out was just to keep a, a list of running ideas. Um, I think we all get great ideas at random times, and most of us don't write them down. And I think like, uh, that makes a lot of the difference. And so I think keeping this list of ideas, uh, trying to write down anytime you see an interesting idea or see an interesting product, and you say, oh, wow, that's actually really cool. Maybe I can use uh, a similar methodology to, and apply it to something else. Um, so ideation is like a, a big thing, and uh, the list of ideas I have, I usually always have this short list of like the top five, and so I like I know right now kind of the top five apps I want to build next. Um, and then if anything kind of drops in between, then I'll, I'll build it. You know, if a new image model comes out next week that's like really really incredible and open source, um, I'm probably going to be scrambling to build an app with with that. 
Uh, naming is another big one. You know, you want a short, memorable name. I, you know, you can use AI tools like Domains GPT to kind of uh, check names that also have the domain name available uh, to, to use them. Uh, number three is design. You know, thinking through how the app will work. Like, you know, I'm going to have a landing page, and a user is going to click like enter, and then enter get this page where they upload something, and then they see an image. You know, and so it's like these two screens, and uh, you can either kind of sketch it out on a piece of paper, you can use Figma, uh, or you can use a lot of these prototyping tools uh, to, to try to help you think through uh, what, what the app is. Uh, and then I go about building the actual app, so trying to make the simplest possible working version of a specific app. Um, and like I said, I, I always try to shoot for like one API endpoint, you know, like one, like just very, very simple. Um, step five is like, you know, I have a working prototype now. I, I start to think through uh, authentication and limits of like, okay, like how expensive uh, is this? Like how many, um, how many use, uses do I want to give each person per day? Do I want to want to add authentication? Do I want to add bring your own API key? Uh, so it really just depends on on the app and the AI model that I'm using. Uh, and then step six is usually kind of prepping for the launch, getting a nice OG image, getting a domain, adding analytics, uh, writing a nice README because, like I said, I, I, everything I kind of do is open source. So I also want to make sure the code is is really easy to use and, and really easy to uh, to clone. Um, and then the last step is actually launching. And so I usually use LinkedIn or X to, to launch and uh, you know, kind of uh, just see what people say at that point. Cool, final section, uh, and then I think we'll get into some Q&A. We have a little bit more time because the demos didn't work. Um, so advice for building apps, I have these like seven tips that I'm gonna go through. Uh, one is thinking of an idea that excites you but is very, very simple, uh, that you should be able to describe to anyone in five words, right? Like blink shot, generate real-time images. Llama coder, go from some text to an app, right? Like, and I think this is one of the biggest mistakes people use is they try to, they try to think like, okay, you know what, I, like, I wanna build this, like personal CRM software that has this dashboard that will email me every week and do this and that. And you know, they come up with this like grandiose version and spend like six months building it and then they realize, oh wow, it's like it's it's um, this isn't this wasn't the right thing to build, or um, this is just like really hard and nobody cares about it now. And so it, it's all about uh, thinking of an idea that excites you but is also uh, really, really simple. Number two, and this is very underrated, is making sure the UI looks good. A lot of the apps I showed you are AI apps, but I actually spend 80% of the time on the UI for most of my apps. Um, and that should tell you like how, how important this thing is. I, I've like the first few apps I've built kind of looked really, really bad, and that was a big part of why nobody kind of used them. And I've started learning that even if you take a really simple idea or something that's like so simple, like summarizing a PDF, right? You can go to ChatGPT and summarize a PDF right now. But I, I built a PDF summary app and I spent a lot of time making it look really, really, really good. And, and then I had tens of thousands of people that, that ended up using it. Um, so it's all about making it look really good, making it really easy to use. Uh, and making it really, really straightforward. Um, the third tip is just keeping the app simple. I talked about this a bunch, but uh, most of my apps have only one or two API calls. Um, tip number four is trying to incorporate the latest AI models. A lot of these apps um, that, that I showed you have like used some of the latest AI models, like Blinkshot, the real-time image generation app. Um, that used uh, a model called Flux Schnell, and I, and I launched this app, I think, two days after this model came out. Um, and so it was one of the first apps that leveraged kind of this new technology or this new really, really fast model that was good. Um, and so doing that kind of increases uh, the potential for uh, virality. Uh, tip five is launching early and then iterating. Um, for a lot of these apps, like still to this day, you know, like 40 apps later, I still have no idea what will do really, really well versus what won't. Um, and the only way to de-risk this is to simplify your project, to launch early, and then if nobody really cares about it or not a lot of people use it, then at least, you know, you didn't spend six months building, you spent a week building, and you can kind of move on to another idea. Cool. Uh, another tip that, I, that I've kind of done is trying to make it free and open source. Um, so folks can kind of learn from you and are, are also very incentivized to share it. Um, and so uh, the, the, this is something that, that's worked well uh, for me. And then the last tip I have is uh, just keep shipping. Um, a lot of AI apps, like I said, don't do very well. It's a numbers game. You have to kind of keep building and building and building. And the more you build, the more you realize, you know, kind of what resonates and what doesn't. The faster you get at building, uh, and the better you get at like picking picking ideas. So um, a, a lot of it just comes down to you know putting in the hours, building a lot of stuff, and then uh, seeing what happens. 
And that's all I have. We actually have five minutes for Q&A if anybody has any questions. Um, and yeah, I think you can line up at these uh, podiums and we can uh, take a few questions. But just uh, before that, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nutlope or uh, my email, Hassan at together.ai. Uh, we also have a Together AI booth here at S25. Um, I'll be there uh, for a few hours after, after the talk. So uh, come and talk to us. Yes. Yeah, I just yell. Uh, oh, it's on. Okay. Uh, thanks for sharing. This is great. Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, you have a lot of traction and success, more than many most YC startups. Why don't Why don't you just start a company? It, it seems like the perfect formula. I'm just really curious. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I mean, a uh, part of it is I I really enjoy um, I really enjoy teaching, and a lot of these apps, like I can. A lot of these apps, first of all, do well because they're free and open source, right? And so because I'm, I'm strictly not trying to monetize them, I'm, I'm strictly like trying to make them free, and I get companies to kind of sponsor it and, and, uh, and, and keep it open source. Um, so I just kind of enjoy doing that and launching these apps, and I, I will also like make videos and blog posts about different things. Uh, but yeah, maybe eventually I'll, I'll come out with an idea that I really, really love working on and, uh, and, and do that. But um, for now, it's just been really fun getting to build a lot of this stuff. Well, if you ever do start a startup, let me know. I'll, I'll Andrew invest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So what are some common trends with ideas that maybe you thought were good but didn't resonate with people and the reverse? What have the surprises been? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, where have the surprises been? It's, it's been a little bit random, honestly. Um, I think... I think one insight I got is like building apps where people can very easily share what they create tend to do way, way better. Um, and so now I try to think about that, like building in that viral loop into my apps on like, if you can generate an image, I want to make it really easy to share that image or and share it with like a really nice OG image. Um, and so that's one insight I've had is like, you know, apps that have that viral loop of, of like, oh, this is really cool and I can share this with a friend and they can go on it and try it out and they can go on it. Um, and so that, that's something that I've incorporated a little bit more. Yes. I love that you're making all of this like, you know, it's all free so far, it's not monetized, but how are you paying for like all the compute and the model calls yourself? Like, are you funding this? Yeah, great question. So, um, first off, you know, I, I work at Together AI. We sponsor all of the compute in terms of the AI models, uh, but then I'll also partner with other AI companies. Like, Neon gives me a free database to use their database, and, and like, you know, all, like Clark gives me a free account for authentication. And, uh, uh, and the reason for that is because it's, it's, it's all open source. So it's, it's in their best interest to be in that open source project and, and to, for, for people to use it. Um, and so that, that's also uh, like a good piece of feedback I have for people is like, if you want to just tinker with apps and build them, a lot of people are like, oh, but I, I can't launch an app because AI models are too expensive, or this thing's too expensive. Um, more often than not, if you launch something and you reach out to these companies and you say, hey, like I'm building this, this open source app, can you please give me some credits? More often than not, they will. Uh, and so that's generally how I do it. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, yes. Yeah, um, I mean, thank you for this talk. It was, it was really great. Um, I just had a question because you talk about how frequently you build these apps, like every, every week, you said, for, for a decent amount of time. Um, and you also talked about you know using the latest and greatest in AI models. With them changing so quick, and with you having so many apps out there, do you ever struggle with like going back through and, and like changing the models that you've used for some of these apps? And, and how do you deal with that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I think like a really cool. Um a really cool thing is the fact that you can do that. You can just build an app with an AI model, and then a better AI model comes out three months later, and you can go, and a lot of the time it's like a one-line change of like, let me update this model, and the app just gets way better, or it just unlocks new things. Uh, and so that's something I do frequently, where I'll, I'll go back and I'll like even like relaunch an existing app with a new AI model or add a, a, a tiny feature to it. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of a superpower of like building with AI is the fact that you can just kind of replace these AI models. Thank you. Yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you all so much for coming. I appreciate it.